Welcome back to ADHD Whiskey. My name is Matt. Today's video is a sponsored video brought to you by my friends and your friends over at Into the AM. Into the AM has these fancy clothes. If I look comfortable to you, it's because I'm wearing this. This super comfortable Into the AM hoodie. It's so comfortable. I could just fall asleep right here, but I won't do that to you because it'd be a long video of me snoring and sleep apneaing all the way through the night. I'm wearing their comfortable hoodie. I'm also wearing some super de friggin duper comfortable underpants from Into the AM. My bottom and front bottom have never been more comfortable in a pair of underpants. Not a day in my life. I'm not taking them off. I'm gonna wear them forever. Also, Into the AM is currently doing one heck of a giveaway. It's called the Lift Your Spirits giveaway. If you go to Into the AM, dot com slash ADHD sign up. They're giving away a $300 credit for liquor. They're also giving away a 10 piece bar tool set. And if that's not enough, they're also giving away $200 worth of into the AM gear, which I've already said is super friggin comfortable. I love it. So go to into the AM.com slash ADHD sign up. And then there's a bunch of extra ways that you can get more and more entries every single day. Now that we got the business out of the way, let's get down to the business of getting down, shall we? I took a look at my shelf and I saw the Elmer sitting there. And I was like, people love that son of a bitch. And then I asked myself, what son of a bitch could be better than that son of a bitch? but you can actually find it. And then I scoured through my bottles. They all clanged around, clangity, bangity, clangity. And I found this son of a bitch. This is a old Forster 1910. It's not even opened yet. We already know that Elmer's impossible to find. And we know that old Forster 1910 isn't impossible to find. Unless you're the person out there who's gonna tell me in the comments below that it is impossible for you to find. In which case, I'm sorry. It's pretty pretty easy to find where, where I come from. We're gonna see if 1910 Old Fine Whiskey can beat the tar out of Elmer T. Lee. Let's get ready for the bourbon skirmish. America, Elmer is going in glass A because It is a hard bottle to find in stores. America. Well, Forrester 1910 is going in B. Now we start the confusion round. Now we start the confusion round. Now we start the confusion round. Twirling them up, spin it up. You go there, you go there. And you switch spots when I'm not looking. You guys switch when I'm not looking. I don't know. Still spinning. Still mixing them up. Still don't know which one is which. Still have no idea. No clue. Not a chance. Which one is which? You tell me. Or don't tell me because then I'll know. First category. Shelf appeal. <laughs> In the shelf appeal category, I think we have a clear winner. In my humble opinion, the only thing that this Elmer T. Lee bottle has going for it is the picture of Elmer T. Lee hanging out inside the bottle. Like he's just loving life, swimming in whiskey without coming up for a breath, ever. He's just in, he's just in there with his funny hat. The 1910 on the other hand is a tall er bottle. It's got curves. It's just, just shaped in the right way. It's a beautiful bottle. It's got the tan and the gold and the teal, which is where the appeal lies. 1910 wins the shelf appeal category. They take this out of the barrel and then they put it in another barrel. A super de duper, extra de duper, de duper, de extra de duper pressure bottle. They put it in a really, really heavily charred barrel to finish it in, I believe. This 1910 rings in at 93 proof, no age statement. Elmer T. Lee is a single barrel from the Buffalo Trace Distillery. It rings in at 90 proof and it also lacks an age statement. First class. Ooh, brown sugar, sweetness, sweet caramel. 
Nice cherry. That is a unique, yummy cherry. It's like a, there's probably not a lot of people watching from the beautiful state of Iowa, but if you are a wa, then you know what a twin bing is. And this smells like a friggin' twin bing. Chocolate and cherry and yummy. It might even smell like a king bing, which is a big twin bing, for those of you wondering. If you don't know what a twin bing is, but you love candy and cherries, you should look into it, for sure. I like the nose of that a lot. Now let's smell glass number two. Huh. Butterscotch and toffee. Fudge. It smells like Mackinac Island fudge. Little saltwater taffy on there. Very interesting nose. There's almost a young note that's coming through here, but I don't think it's a young note. I think it's different. I think it's a different kind of note, but it reminds me of a young note. Okay, let's be honest here. Two different glasses, two very different noses, and son of a bitch. I can sit here and pretend like I'm not sure which one is which one, and that'd be true, I'm not sure. But just based off the noses, I think I know which one is which one. So although this is still blind, I'm gonna try to be as objective or subjective, whichever one works in this situation, as possible. And I'm just gonna go off pleasure alone. Which one do I enjoy more? And that's all we're gonna do. I don't care if I know which one is which one, because damn it, one of them is darker than the other one. And I think that's attributed to maybe a second barrel in possibly pretty much pretty pretty sure i didn't think about it coming in first glass down the hatch mm. sweet that is like a red lifesaver the candy the lifesaver candy it is a red lifesaver that you dropped in some pepper some peppercorns, some grinded up peppercorns, and you did not clean it off, you just ate it. That was really easy to drink. It didn't coat the mouth extremely well. A bit of youth coming through, not a lot, but a little bit. A little bit of corn is what I'm, is what I'm getting at here. A little bit of corn, it's pleasant, it's pleasant. It didn't, does, this does not blow me away. It's not something that I would need immediately more of. It's not, begging me to take another sip, although I will, obviously. Low proof, not gonna offend anybody. It's enjoyable. Class number two. Class number two, down the hatch. That is wowzers. Somebody burnt that. That tastes burnt. It's a burnt son of a bee. Wow. I used to make these chocolate cakes for my wife when we were dating, when I was still wooing her into bed with me. And I occasionally would make her a chocolate cake because she told me to. And I was like, absolutely. And occasionally I would burn the cake. This tastes like burnt chocolate that you scraped off the bottom of a pan and not in the best way. It's not very sweet, not very sweet. It's more like a bitter, a bitter burnt chocolate. Second glass tastes like the gingerbread man went swimming in a lake full of chocolate and he got out of the lake and then was the victim of some terrible heinous crime. And then they lit him on fire and they burned him to death, poor gingerbread man. And then after, after so long, they put him out with just a bunch of alcohol, which in reality would not put him out, would actually make it worse. But in my reality, if the gingerbread man's fire was put out with alcohol and they just left him there of alcoholed gingerbread, chocolate covered burnt mess that's what this is i'm assuming this is the 1910 it's gotta be and if it is maybe it just needs a whole bunch of airtime 
maybe it needs a bunch of airtime because this is the neck pour, the first pour. In today's bourbon skirmish, Elmer T. Lee versus Old Forester 1910. I was looking to find a bottle that I thought could kick Elmer T. Lee's ass and was also easily available and findable and not very expensive. And I think I failed. In the bourbon skirmish, the winner was glass number one. And glass number one is letter A. And there is a reason I am holding Elmer T. Lee still because I thought this was the winner. And it is. Today is your lucky day, Elmer. Elmer comes out unscathed. My name is Matt. This is ADHD Whiskey. That was a bourbon skirmish. And this is me mixing the two together to find out if it gets better or if I just made a big boo-boo. We'll just find out in a second. Like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on trying to find whiskey blends um, spontaneously, even though 1910 tastes like it spontaneously combusted inside the bottle and nobody was there to save its life. It just burned to death. Then I drank it. Yikes. I don't know. Is 1910 and Elmer T. Lee a good blend? Let's find out. It's no Black Prince. 